Hi there and welcome to 272analytics.com's tutorial on how to create z-scores in Stata. In order to do so I'm going to go ahead and create a randomized data set and I'm going to start by using the command set seed because I have worked with this data set before and I use this number for that. When you use set seed you make it possible to pull up the very same randomized data that you generated from previous attempts. So instead of generating new random data every time, a set seed is a great command to let you work with the same data that you had already pulled up earlier through randomization. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable for, um, for IQ. Okay, I'm just going to call it IQ2 and I'm going to have it set up so that it's normally distributed. That's why I'm using the draw norm command. And I want 100 observations uh, and parentheses 100. I like the mean to be 100 and I'd like the standard deviation to be 15. So let me start by creating that variable and demonstrating it to you. Now obviously you see it has more significant figures than we would expect an IQ to have. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new variable IQ which will just be the rounded version of IQ2. There you see it in this column and now we do not need IQ2 anymore so I'm going to go ahead and drop that variable and now I want to summarize IQ for you quickly um, just because there's a couple of things that we're going to be doing here using this information. So I summarized it for you. We see that the mean is pretty close to 100. Standard deviation is pretty close to 15. And then I use the command return list here. So we could see the scalars. And the scalars include uh, basically all the information that was calculated here for summarize got stored in Stata. So for example what's relevant to us here is that the mean was stored and the standard deviation was also scored. Uh, stored, I beg your pardon. And so now we have the material and the code that we need to generate a z-score for each value. I'm going to use, a, uh, use the following code. I'm going to say gen z equals and then within parentheses here notice the parentheses structure um, the z-score is simply the mean of the value. Uh, I beg your pardon. It's 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 the it's the observation it's the observation minus the mean for the entire set of observations divided by the standard deviation again for the entire set of observations. So the figure I'm highlighting here in the code IQ that's going to be repeated for each observation of IQ. So from each observation we're going to subtract the mean IQ for the entire data set and then we're going to divide by the standard deviation for the entire data set and what that's going to do is give us z-scores for every uh, IQ score in our sample. Now why am I using this R mean and R SD stuff? Well if you see the return list here uh, we see that certain data were already created and stored by the summarize command. So instead of having to create a uh, a new column for means and a new column for standard deviation and then use manual procedures to um, to create the z-score we're just going to use this shortcut and do this there and we see that a z-score has now been created for each value of IQ now one thing we could have done if, if we had wanted to we could have said something like you know gen mean equals and then you know perhaps copy that in and then we could have also done the same thing with uh, with SD we could have copied that in and then we would have what we would have done there is we would have created actual columns for mean and standard deviation just repeating values and then we could have gone ahead and used this code and we would just have changed it for example we would have said something like IQ minus mean divided by SD. So that manual approach would have worked too, but then it's it's not as elegant because we would have had to drop these uh, variables that we've created, mean and SD, because they don't really add anything. And here, using these commands with the R and the scalars, you got to um, introduce yourself, if you didn't know already, to this really nice feature of Stata that when you do um, certain commands, the scalars are all saved up in the data set. Um, although they don't show up in the data set, they're stored there. And so you can kind of invoke them when you need to do something like create a z-score here. 
I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and I would like to invite you to visit 272analytics.com for access to all our free statistics tutorials in Stata, SPSS, R, eViews, and Minitab. Here at 272analytics.com we provide data consulting primarily to graduate students. Therefore we work very closely with you in order to perfect your chapter 3 and chapter 4. That means helping you design surveys, uh, getting your data input, assisting you with fashioning appropriate research questions and hypotheses, uh, getting your data, extracting them, transforming them, cleaning them, uh, putting them through analysis, uh, interpreting them, explaining them to you so that at the end of the day you know exactly what story your data tell, why they matter, what they mean in a manner that lets you write a, a perfect chapter 4 uh, following a perfect chapter 3 and lets you defend your dissertation or thesis with complete confidence. We provide ethical consulting. It's not a writing service, so you will be responsible for taking our blueprint, our assistance, our consulting, and transforming them into an appropriate academic project for yourself. I'd also like to remind you that we provide the same services to undergraduate students who are working with quantitatively oriented assignments. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.